The Second World War was a confrontation of unprecedented proportions, and the nations in conflict were willing to do anything to achieve victory. There were many times when that search put soldiers in inhumane situations who, in general, endured great calamities in defense of their country. From the poor conditions in which the crew members lived inside the submarines, to the human sacrifice carried out by the kamikaze pilots of Japan. Today we invite you to discover some of the most dangerous jobs that soldiers of both sides had to perform during World War II. Join us in a new episode of Military History. At the time of combat, the American planes that crossed the airspace had to have weapons that would allow them to defend themselves and eradicate enemies. To achieve this, soldiers were arranged inside a small spherical turret that was located at the bottom rear of the aircraft. These men needed really sharp reflexes to react quickly to the enemy threat, and to make use of the two Browning and M2 machine guns that the structure carried. But the great difficulty of this task lay in the minuscule space available to the gunners to maneuver. These canopies were typically no more than a meter wide to reduce the aircraft's drag, so their operators had to hunker down inside for long periods of time. Also, if the aircraft carrying them was shot down, the soldiers had to exit the turret through an upper hatch in order to equip their parachutes. If they weren't fast enough, the airship would become their grave. Of course these spheres were a target for the enemies. The destruction of its turrets neutralized the aircraft's attack capabilities, so its operators constantly lived with the threat of direct fire on them. It is said that most ball turret gunner mostly never survived over five missions. With today's level of technology, it is easy to assume that any torpedo can automatically home itself to its target, but this was not always the case. During the first half of the 20th century, soldiers were needed to man these weapons, both from within and mounted on top of them, as if it were a miniature submarine. Among these models stood out the Neger torpedo from Germany, which had a hollowed-out nose, equipped with a control system. Since the space for the pilot did not allow the placement of explosives, a second torpedo was used in the lower part. Thus, soldiers would propel the weapon to the target and disengage from it before impact. If that doesn't sound risky enough, check out this fact, approximately 80% of German human torpedoes were lost in accidents without even getting close to their target. Now let's stop for a second on the territory of the former Soviet Union, or to be more specific, on the city of Murmansk. This place was designated as one of the main ports to receive Arctic convoys carrying provisions for the Kremlin. The soldiers on these ships had to circle the Norwegian coast in order to carry out their mission, which meant enduring temperatures of up to minus 30 degrees Celsius. Severe weather, extreme fog, strong currents and the threat of total darkness as winter approached were some of the daunting challenges these crews had to face. In order to fight the frost, the sailors turned the ship's fans on at a lower speed and blocked the ventilation ducts with whatever they had at hand. Unfortunately, this last tactic against the cold caused large outbreaks of tuberculosis due to the lack of ventilation of the ships. But that's not all, due to the low temperatures, many times the decks of the ships ended up buried in large amounts of ice that had to be cut and thrown out of the ship to prevent it from sinking due to excess weight. It is common knowledge that the German submarines of World War II were among the most feared and respected. The Unterseeboot, or U-boats, meant almost certain destruction for enemy ships. The numbers speak for themselves, and the 3,000 casualties of Allied ships against the fleet of approximately 1,100 German submarines is evidence of the power of these ships. But navigating inside one of these 200-foot-long, 16-foot wide beasts was just as terrifying as facing one. Due to the weaponry carried inside, crews of approximately 50 soldiers barely had room to move. For periods of up to six months, these men lived in cramped quarters with nowhere to bathe, shave or change clothes. Privacy was so non-existent that everyone had to share the same bathroom. The crew members worked with temporary rotations, eight hours of the day dedicated to sleep, eight dedicated to main tasks and another eight dedicated to secondary tasks. These men were to be ready 24 hours a day for battle. Now, these terrible working conditions were not only found in the depths, 
but also on ships above sea level. During the war, the United States Merchant Marine had to make innumerable and risky voyages across the Atlantic Ocean in order to provide supplies to the European allies. This made American merchant marines a strategic target for the towering German submarines to shoot down. With a casualty rate reaching 3.85%, the highest for a military branch in U.S. history, about 8,300 sailors lost their lives, while some 12,000 were wounded and just over 600 were taken like prisoners. Added to this are the 31 ships that disappeared along with their crews without leaving any trace. Perhaps the most striking job of World War II was that of the Japanese kamikaze pilots. This term was used to refer to suicide attacks carried out by pilots of a special unit belonging to the Imperial Japanese Navy. This combat methodology was introduced to provide foolproof attacks on Allied warships. The suicide pilots loaded their planes with bombs of up to 250 kilograms and then attacked the enemy with their aircraft in order to ensure their destruction. The Japanese high command had to make sure that the pilots did not back down at the last moment. For this, planes such as the Nakajima Ki-115 Tsuruji were implemented, which detached from its landing gear when taking off, so its pilots had no choice but to complete the suicide mission. In addition, other models like the Yokosuka MXY-7 did not have landing gear directly so they were carried by other planes to fulfill their task. The most unfortunate thing about this strategy was its ineffectiveness offensively, since the Allies, sooner rather than later, began to use tracking lights to identify the kamikazes and thus destabilize their attacks. This method had a success rate of less than 20%, making it a worthless sacrifice for the Japanese army. Which of these risky jobs do you consider the worst of all? Leave your answer in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe to our channel to learn about many more military events that left their mark on history. Thank you very much for joining us until the end. And stay tuned for our next video.